Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to take a look at generics. Now this video is going to go over the topic of generics and why they are important to us and in future videos within this free course SwiftUI iOS take home test you'll see the benefits that generics offer us in terms of writing flexible code. So what is a generic? Well generic code is a feature in Swift that allows you to write flexible reusable function and types that work with any other type now, the benefits of this is that it allows us to write code where we don't have to repeat ourselves. Let's actually look at a simple example of this. So I've got here a playground open. I'm going to just create a function within a logger that prints an int to the console. So let's do this now. So now let's actually just use this and see this in action. So what should happen now is we should actually see the message captured and printed to the log the value of one. So let's just do this now. Cool. So that works great. But what about if rather than an integer, I actually wanted to log a string. Well, let's actually add in another function. So now we can actually call our second function here this time, but with a string. Now this does work and it does have a name and it's called function overloading. And what this means is that you actually have two functions with the same name, but they accept different types. But what about if I actually wanted to add in a function where I could log a date, Boolean, double. Do we really want to create a function for each one of these types every single time? Well, no. And this is where generics come in. So generics will actually help us solve this issue since they will allow us to almost have a placeholder for any type. So let's actually remove our log for the string and instead we'll actually add a generic placeholder to our first log function. So let's do that now. So we'll remove this and then we'll update this to say val and then we'll change this placeholder to also be val as well. Now we're actually able to use our same logger code but this time we can actually pass in any type because we're using our placeholder here. So if we actually just run this, you'll see that it works the exact same way because our placeholder allows us to accept any type. So let's actually add in a few more examples. Cool. And as you can see, if I just run this, it all works fine and done there. But what about if we wanted to have a function that actually performs some kind of calculation on two different values? Now, rather than us having a logger struct this time, let's actually create a new one called mathmax and we'll create a function that actually adds two values together and returns the result. You'll notice that you actually have an error here. So you might be wondering why do we have an error? Well, remember what I said before, all this T is, is a placeholder for any type now the problem here is that this function, this plus here is actually a function. Now this plus allows you to actually add two numbers, but this generic doesn't actually tell us that it's a number. It could be anything. For all you know, this could be a string. So it's not actually able to actually infer if it's able to add together whatever type that we pass in here. So how can we fix this? Well, what we need to do is we actually need to give this placeholder something called a constraint now the constraint that we want to give this is a constraint that allows you to actually use the addition functionality and we actually just go to the documentation for int you'll see that if you actually scroll all the way down you'll be able to see what int actually conforms to and one of the things that int actually conforms to is a type called numeric here so the numeric protocol allows you to actually perform mathematic operations on types. So what we want to do is we actually want to use this protocol numeric as our constraint for our generic. So let's go into our generic. And then this time, in order to actually give this a constraint, it's used a colon. And then after that, we're going to say numeric like so. And what you should see is that our error goes away because this function, you're able to actually use this plus function on the numeric protocol. So now what we're able to do is actually pass in any type 
that actually conforms to numeric. So this could be an integer, a double, a float. So first of all, what we're going to do is actually make this a static function. So we don't have to create an instance of mathematics. And then what we're going to say is mathematics.add one and one. And now if we run this, you'll see here that it actually gives us two. And if I wanted to, we could say 1.5. And if we run this, you'll see here that it gives us 2.5. So any number, we can actually now perform addition because we've added that generic constraint. But if we actually change this to be a string instead, and we run this, you'll see that we actually get an error. And that's because it's saying here that string doesn't conform to the numeric protocol, as you can see. So that's working exactly how we want it to. So looking at our code so far, you can see that generics help us write reusable code that we can extend functionality by having a placeholder or if we need to pass in a generic type that different types conform to, we can use it to help us build on top of this since we don't want to add a function in for every single type of number that exists within Swift. So this was just a simple quick video about generics. Hopefully that broke that down for you. And if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit notification bells, get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.